the play is not set in Russia. It's set in England, uh, in, a, in a country town, and the people are pretty ordinary people. So basically what happens in the play is a marriage falls apart. Whatever I say seems to be wrong. I don't care who's right or wrong. I just want you to be there, here. I am here. No, you're not. It's as if you've sneaked away while I wasn't looking. I don't know how else to explain it. It's as if you've taken the easy way out. And you think the easy way is wrong? Yes, always. I don't know where all this is coming from. It's coming from me. I want a real marriage. I don't know what you mean by that. I'm sorry, but half the time, I don't know what you're talking yes, about. Yes, you do. That's just sneaking away talk. That's not true. I thought I'd say something that even you can understand. I love you. Right. Do you love me? You don't have to ask that. It's just assumed. When did you last say it? It's just assumed. It's just there. I want you to say it. Well, I can't say it now. It wouldn't mean anything. Why not? Well, I'd only be saying it because you asked me to well, say it. Well, I don't mind. Alice, this is child. Just say it! Why are you doing this? Why are you turning everything into a problem? This isn't about me. This is about you. Don't ever say that again. You're part of this. You're involved whether you like it or not. Do something. Say something. If you hate me, say you hate me. Say, say you want to leave me. Say you want to kill me. Tell me something real. This is a long marriage that's coming apart. Although, um, not to give away too much, um, the marriage has been coming apart from the beginning. Uh, the husband finally realizes they married the wrong people. They never were compatible, although they believed that they were. You can say anything you want to me. Anything in the whole world. I want to leave. Leave? Yes. Leave to go where? With someone else. Someone else? Edward is reading a book as we begin the play. Uh, he's reading a, a book of um, diary excerpts and, and journal entries from uh, soldiers of Napoleon's army who marched on Moscow and then re marched the long retreat from Moscow after they discovered that Moscow was empty and they foolishly looted the city and then in the middle of winter tried to drag all their loot home. Uh, when the soldiers weakened in this retreating column, they were just left behind in the snow to die, which seems brutal, but Edward comes to think that it was necessary. Uh, he says at one point, why should everyone die? What good does that do? And this, for him, is, is a metaphor for how he is about to behave in his marriage. Edward is a man who has been living a long time in a marriage that he's been unhappy in. And he feels that he's committed to the marriage, but perhaps it's taking more out of him than he can get back. He's He's afraid to admit that he doesn't love his wife, but more than that, he can't give her what she wants, and he can't get what he needs. Uh, many of the themes that come in, up in the play are, what do we need? What do we, how do we justify our own survival? How do we justify leaving somebody after making a commitment to them? And the son looks on helplessly as as that happens and each of the parents turns to him and wants his help and wants his support and he has to negotiate his own route. Here darling, here, don't cry. Oh, just, just tell me what I'm to do with it and I'll do it for you. Please darling, please don't cry my baby, my beloved, my, my beautiful boy. Unfortunately, the, 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 just the concept of divorce is such a prevalent thing and everyone knows what it's going through. I think it's something that people can relate to. It doesn't have to be personally. It's certainly, yeah, I've, I've seen that happen. I understand how that can happen and it's not always torrid. It's not always somebody doing something hideous. It's sometimes people just don't stay together. This is a murder, Jamie. Just because there isn't any blood, don't think it's not a murder. He's murdering a marriage. Marriages don't bleed, but it's still murder. I don't think it helps to talk like that. 
So tell me how to talk so it does help. Marriages break down. It happens all the time. Nobody wants it to happen, but it does, and we have to live with it. It happens all the time, and we have to live with it? What sort of talk is that? Children are, are starving to death all the time, but it's not all right. But we live with it. And though Jamie is in his 30s, he still is very affected as to what the whole gravitas of having his parents, everything that he believes in, completely separated. And uh, it's not the same when you're eight years old and wondering what's going to happen to you, but still, his life is going to be very different now. I can't just leave you. Why not? You've left me already, just like he has. Well, if I'm to be alone, I'd rather be alone and not have you dangling about. Go on, leave! I don't have a husband anymore, so I can't have a son, can I? It takes two to make a child, and there aren't two of us any longer, so you don't exist. So tell me, Edward, this settlement of yours, do I get more than I would get if you died? If I die? Well, no. As things stand now, if I die, you inherit the house, our savings, and receive a full widow's pension. And if we get a divorce, I get less. Well, yes, if I'm not dead, I, I need something to live on. So it would be better for me if you were dead. I suppose so, but I'm not. It would be better for me in every way. I'd rather be a widow, but I have to manage on my own. A widow has so much more status than a left woman. I could put flowers on your grave and remember all the good times we had and look forward to being with you in heaven again, reunited as they put on the gravestones. But as it stands, there aren't any graves, and you've poisoned all my memories, and when we do meet again in the next world, there'll be bloody Angela clogging the place up. She just begins to lose it. You know, she becomes almost a little crazy at some point. But you, you can't invent a private reality. Well, then nor can you. Mine isn't a private reality. Then nor is mine. Yes, it is, isn't it, Jamie? Don't ask me to take sides. Don't ask you to take sides between reality and madness. That's what it is, you know, deciding when you're married and when you're not, whatever it happens to suit you. It's, it's madness and chaos. And then when she does lose her husband, it propels her into this other kind of existence of where she contemplates suicide. You know, she goes through this period of grief and self-pity and blame and... Um, and at the end, she finds a resolution. It's, a, it's an actor's great joy to be able to stand up and bring beautiful words together with very um, intimate emotions and share them with an audience. Um, there's just nothing better than that. I'm drawn to plays about people trying very hard to survive and to survive with dignity in circumstances that are extremely difficult. And this play is one of those plays, and that's why I was drawn to it. And I really think, you know, if, you, if theater is for anything, it's, a, it's for discovering life. And I think this is one aspect of life that's very well uh, portrayed in this play.